The situation with MJF and AEW went from bad to worse in the last 48 hours, if all of these reports are to be believed. You've got names like Sean Ross Sapp and Mike Johnson insisting that this is not a work. And these are people who are not known to break news like this if it doesn't feel legit, if it isn't legitimate. But this is also MJF that we're talking about here. I don't think we can completely discount the possibility that we are being worked to some degree. I think you always have to keep that in mind when we're talking about MJF. But it does sound like there are some very real problems going on with him right now. That this is not just part of some big elaborate work. It was all just some grand scheme that they concocted. There are very real problems going on here that could have a big effect on tonight's show. Where he is in one of the biggest matches of the night. It's not like he's in some match on the mid-card. It's not like he's in some kind of battle royal. They don't have a casino battle royal this year. They don't need one because they have 13 matches. He is in one of the feature bouts on this show. And right now, as it stands, it's 50-50 if the match is even going to happen with MJF and Wardlow. So how did we get here? On Friday... MJF no-showed a meet-and-greet with fans in Las Vegas. AEW has taken over Las Vegas this entire week. They were live in Vegas on Wednesday for Dynamite, Friday night for Rampage. They've been having all kinds of fan events. And MJF no-showed his meet-and-greet that he was scheduled for. And the word making the rounds at the event was that he was deliberately not attending and AEW officials were not able to get in touch with him. Either his phone was off or it was on and he just wasn't answering their calls. Fans who paid for MJF for photos and for autographs were offered refunds and exchanges with other talents that were there. Mike Johnson said that he heard from several readers that at the time that he was scheduled to be at the meet and greet, MJF was seen playing slots at Mandalay Bay instead. So he was definitely there. He just chose not to show up. Now to make things even more interesting, a flight was booked for MJF out of Las Vegas. A red-eye flight was booked for him cross-country to Newark, New Jersey, which would have meant that had he gotten on that flight, he would not have been a double or nothing tonight. He did not get on the flight. That is the last update. He was not on that flight. Doesn't mean that he can't still fly out, that there can't be another flight booked for him, but he was not on that plane. He is still in Las Vegas, at least as of the time I am recording this. But based on when that flight was booked, this was not something done impulsively at the last second. There was thought put into this. It was done and booked far enough in advance that thought was put into the idea that maybe he might get on this plane and go home. And fly back to the East Coast. Now, I addressed the MJF situation on the podcast last week. There has been a change in the relationship between him and Tony Khan. It stems at least in part, although now at this point, this feels like just a a small piece of it. But it stems in part from AEW being upset that he did not clear with them in advance an interview that he had given to Ariel Helwani. He just went and gave this hour-long interview to Ariel on his show many weeks ago. And it was actually a really good interview. And it's one of those MJF interviews. You don't really know, you know, how much of it is real and how much of it is him just working. I mean, that's kind of the beauty of the MJF character. You know, he can go and do these interviews and talk about, you know, being buddies with Bruce Pritchard and wanting to go to WWE and all of these different things and say, oh, I, I watch all the WWE shows. I'm a big fan of everything. I watch Raw and I watch SmackDown and I watch NXT 2.0. No wonder this guy is so cranky. I would be too. But there was nothing wrong with the interview. The issue is that he didn't clear it with the AEW PR team in advance, which I guess is is standard practice, and they weren't very happy about that. But a lot of it also has to do with money. And whatever MJF is making, it is not anywhere close to what people like CM Punk and Brian Danielson are making, and possibly other big names that Tony Khan has brought in from WWE Over the last few years, even though MJF has been one of the best parts of AEW television and and is one of the biggest stars in the entire company. You know, when he was signed, he was not the level of star that he is today. 
He sees all of these people making more money than him or assuming that they're making so much more money than him and he wants a bigger piece of the pie. The issue seems to be that Tony Khan is willing to give him more money. And I talked about that too. I said, look, when this guy's contract comes due, you've got to break open the bank vault and do whatever it takes to keep this guy under lock and key. So it's not a case where Tony Khan is not willing to break open the checkbook and give a big fat pay raise to MJF. He's willing to do that, but not without him signing a contract extension. MJF is under contract until 2024. I've heard January 1st, whatever the exact day is. He is under contract with AEW until early 2024 at some point. He has at least another 18 months left on his deal. They have expressed a desire to sign him to a new deal for more money, but he does not want to sign a new deal. And you can understand why. He knows that there is going to be a bidding war for him. He wants to pit Vince McMahon against Tony Khan for his services, and he is likely going to go with the highest bidder. I've talked about the television rights fees that are going to be coming up for AEW and for WWE as well, almost at the same time. And it's all right around the same time that MJF's deal is said to be up. This is a man who is in the driver's seat. This is a man who stands to make a lot more money if he just holds out a little bit longer. But he doesn't want to wait. He wants more money now without signing a new deal. And I totally understand Tony Khan's position on that. I would not throw more money at him either without knowing that I had him locked in for a longer period of time. Otherwise, all you're doing is you're giving in, you're giving him more money, but you're also basically handing him to the competition. MJF has made it very clear in interviews that he is not signing a damn thing before his contract is up. I wouldn't either. But if that's the case, he can't expect a big pay raise until he actually sits down and does put pen to paper. That's just, I side with Tony Khan on that. Now, it also looks like MJF was not very happy about something that Tony said during the Double or Nothing media call a few days ago when he asked, he was asked by someone, I don't know who it was, about the MJF situation. You knew he would be asked about this. And Tony said that wrestling thrives when real life intersects with what's on the screen. There was no free agent market when AEW started. That has changed. The match is a huge opportunity for Wardlow to become an official part of AEW and be something more than MJF's thug. He said that everything else MJF has brought to the conversation about his gripes and his contractual discussions and other issues only adds to the interest in the match. Regardless of how this all pans out, I think we can all agree that's 100% true. Because all anybody's been talking about over the last 12 hours is this MJF situation. They're all wondering what's going to happen. Is he going to show up? Oh, All anybody is talking about. So absolutely, it has certainly added more interest into this pay-per-view. But MJF saw that and he tweeted and then quickly deleted. Fucking LOL. Fuck this place, man. So this is not good. This is not a good place to be. People are going to compare this situation to the situation with Sasha Banks and Naomi. Walking out on WWE. These things happening so close to each other. They're going to make those comparisons, even though the two are not even remotely comparable. First of all, Sasha and Naomi spoke with WWE management. They voiced their concerns to their bosses. They took a meeting with Vince McMahon. MJF, by all accounts, hasn't even been on speaking terms, or is barely on speaking terms, with Tony Khan and people in AEW management. He's been more isolated, he's keeping to himself, he's not talking. When they tried to reach him this time, he didn't even answer his phone. Outside of a a cryptic tweet and delete here and there, there has been no communication from the MJF side. That's one big difference. Another big difference is that the issue with Sasha and Naomi, and again, I, I have to caution, we still have not heard their side of the story from their own mouths. Now, there might be legal reasons for that, but... We haven't heard from them directly, and I'm going to have an update on the Sasha and Naomi stuff a little bit later. But their issue on on that night, at least, was with the creative that was laid out for them. They didn't show up demanding more money on an existing contract that they're already signed to. That was an issue with bad creative. 
This is an issue with what MJF evidently feels is a bad contract. Now, if Sasha and Naomi had no show to fan meet and greet where people paid upwards of 100 bucks to see them, I would have less sympathy for their cause if they would have walked out before the fan event. I don't know why, frankly, they even bother booking MJF for meet and greets. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to me. They're booking this guy for meet and greets. Him of all people on that roster, he's the one who should be exempt from doing meet and greets. But they had people who paid 150 bucks to come see the guy and get shit on by him. Because I guess that's the thing to do. I mean, I've seen reports from people at these meet and greets where MJF is sleeping at his table. He won't even lift his head up to take pictures. Or he'll rip up someone's photo and hand it back to them. He's a heel. He's a heel. He's very good at that. But I guess people pay top dollar for that kind of stuff to be abused. He should have shown up for the meet and greet. That was wrong. Samoa Joe also no-showed his scheduled meet and greet. But that's said to have been a communication issue and not something that he did on purpose. In which case, AEW needs to do a better job of communicating with its talent on where to be and when. When you have two people no-showing meet and greets on the same day, albeit for very different reasons, that's a black eye for the company. But there's one other major difference between the MJF situation and the situation with Sasha and Naomi. And this, to me, is the most important one. And the reason why I think MJF is making a very big mistake if he does not show up to do this, this match tonight. I think he will, by the way. I think he'll be there. I think we'll get the match. But on Raw, a couple of weeks ago, they slapped together a six-pack challenge on short notice as a TV main event, which Naomi was scheduled to win. The person the match was designed to put over is the person who chose to walk out and no-show the match. This is very different. This is an advertised pay-per-view match, a match that even though it was only made official four days ago, is a match that has been building for months. And the person scheduled to go over, most likely, I mean, we don't know for sure what Tony Khan's plan is. I'll, I'll do my predictions in a little bit. But the person most likely winning that match is Wardlow. And Wardlow is the one who gets fucked over the most in this situation. If MJF no-shows this pay-per-view tonight, he is the one, Wardlow that is, that I feel bad for the most in all of this. It would be a horrible, horrible thing for MJF to screw over Wardlow in the biggest match of this man's life. This is his big moment. You know, it's one thing for him to have a disagreement with Tony Khan and choose to go home, breach his contract. Sasha and Naomi did the same, knowing what the consequences might be for them. MJF should know there will be consequences if he chooses to do the same. They at least talk to their bosses first. Do what you need to do, but don't fuck over Wardlow in the process. Show up, work the match, put the guy over, and then go home if that's what you feel you have to do. Nobody, nobody can force him to go to work just because he has a contract. If he doesn't want to go, if he has issues of some kind, he can go home and do what he wants to. And yeah, again, there'll be... A price to pay for that. But if that's how he feels, if he has his, his reasons for doing so, then by all means, after tonight, go ahead. Fly yourself home. Fly back to Plainview. And then you can work things out with Tony Khan in whatever way you feel suitable. But if it comes down to getting more money, go ahead. Try to, try to get more money. Try to get that bag. You know, look, the guy deserves it. If the guy is being underpaid relative to some of the other big names on the roster then he deserves a pay raise, but it would be a horrible thing for him to do that to Wardlow on the biggest night of this man's life. I also, frankly, don't see how smart it is for him to force the issue now, or walk out now, when he stands to make even more money by pitting the two companies against each other. If he burns a bridge with Tony Khan, he gets no offer from the AEW side if, if Tony just lets him walk. And I'm sure WWE, look, they're not going to pay him peanuts, They'll pay him well enough, but they may not see the need to pay him as well as they would otherwise have paid him if they know that there is no longer any competition from the AEW side. Because MJF is not going to Impact. MJF is not going to the NWA. He's not going to go over to Japan and work strong style. He's either going to be in WWE or he's going to be in AEW. He is not going anywhere else. He's not going to Ring of Honor. He's not going back to MLW. He is going to be on the biggest stage possible, whether that's USA Network and Fox 
or TNT and TBS remains to be seen. Why burn a bridge on one side when you don't have to? And you can use that to make yourself even more money. That's one aspect of this I don't get. That doesn't seem to me like a very smart move, which tells me that there likely is more to this than just money. There's likely more to this than just the financial aspect that we don't know about. 